Welcome back to another roundtable. My name is Adam. I have Rusman. Hello. And Victor. Hi, everyone. And we want to wish you a very happy Lunar New Year. Gongxi Fa Tai. Wan Si Lu Yi. All right. So, I mean, look at, I mean, everything is all red and, you know, a lot of festivities. Chinese New Year is here, Lunar New Year. And, uh, you know, what better time than to talk about China yeah. during uh, Chinese New Year, okay? So, the last time we did a uh, market uh, kind of uh, outlook. I think yep. it was uh, you covered the US yep. and the US is at all time high. Yep. yep. All right. And China is at all time you know, all time low. Close, close to yeah. all time low. Close to Very big contrast. Big contrast. Uh, so I think a lot of uh, some of you have asked about China as well after watching the US one. So what do we think about China? Will China you know awaken in twenty twenty four, year of the dragon and everything? Yep. So yeah, yeah. So it's been down for quite some time, three yep. years. Yep. Uh, maybe it could turn around. So we're gonna find out what's gonna happen, what we think about it. But before we jump into that, maybe we just you know go straight into where is it right now. Okay, so I think we look at the Hang Seng Index as uh, as a representative of China. So you can see the Hang Seng Index chart over here. Um, during the 2022 crash, they actually hit sort of like an all time low, even lower than their Asian financial crisis, okay. which you can see over here in the uh, in the chart. Right, it's more than two standard deviation at, at that point of time. Right, and right now they are slightly uh, still higher than the two, 2022 but they are still at the second uh, two sector deviation thing so actually if you look at the Hang Seng index uh, they, they are at very cheap valuation right now yeah, yeah so and I think uh, but basically they, where, where they are now they are in the, they are in the trash can uh, people, <laughs> nowadays people the stock just market, yeah. yeah the stock market they just dump Chinese stock into the trash can because yeah. they're not performing it's down I think my Chinese stock also are not doing well mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right and uh, as compared to the US so it's really a big disparity in terms of uh, performance there right so but I think what we can see the down performance since 2021 I think the index has been down for almost I would say close to 50% mm. right so this is like a big bear market for China and uh, those of you who invested in China since uh 2021, okay, you probably be feel very depressed, okay, okay. because there has been ongoing uh, negative news since then, uh, and of course now I'm not going to recap the whole history, but just to quick summary on the recent uh, bad news that are out there in the market, I think people are generally concerned on how fast China economy is recovering because since they l- come out from the lockdown in 2023. Right, people were generally expecting that their growth to be much faster, right? Mm. But you know, as you see some of the data that uh, we saw with the manufacturing output uh, slower than expected, you know, and of course China uh, debt are also rising. Mm. Okay, across the board, it's hitting all time high, and now we are also in a situation where you know people uh, generally are concerned that China may he- head into the the direction where China were. Uh, Japan were in, you okay, know, the uh, lost 20, decades and all yeah, that. 20, yeah, 20, 30 years ago, right? Mm. And yeah, so now China also in a deflation uh, period, mm. right? I mean, the world is grappling with all the inflation stuff. China is defla- deflating. Mm. Uh, the prices are coming down. So this is not a good thing. Uh, generally, if you have uh, prices drop low, dropping, businesses uh, generally they don't have much pricing power so they may report lower set of uh, result mm. and likewise for all the manufacturing data right so that generally is not good for the country and your salary feels like you know no, no increment no growth mm. people generally feel very uh, sad or negative and then they may cut back on their spending mm. okay so that's what generally generally the sentiments are right now and of course you have a property crisis mm. <laughs> which has been ongoing since 2020 uh, since the china Evergrande and that came back in 2023 when country garden is one of the largest uh, another largest property developer that are uh, actually facing some liquidity issue mm. uh, they are almost as big as uh, uh, china Evergrande, right so uh, this property crisis hit the whole market i think the property prices in china are also all coming down okay and that property uh, to Chinese actually, that actually form about our wealth and when you start to see your wealth coming down of course you generally mm. will spend less right yeah. so that's where all the negative sentiments are currently uh, right now and of course with China economy is not doing well obviously the yen also not doing well mm. okay so people who invest in China oh the yen now weakened again US dollars or even Sing dollars and that generally is bad for uh, investors and uh, moreover I think the last uh, since late December actually the government actually announced that they're going to crack down on 
uh, gaming again. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so that affected Tencent. That affected Tencent, and yeah. there was a there was a wipe off of uh, I think billions of dollars from the market valuation of Tencent, mm. and a few other companies. But you know that policy was announced in December. I was on my holiday, and then suddenly when, <laughs> I, saw, when I saw this, I oh my oh, god, okay. like, everything <laughs> is coming back because twenty twenty one was the year where they cracked down the whole mm. sector, right? And that was generally leads to the huge uh, sell down since then. And of course, then I think the next few days they quickly pull back that 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 announcement. They sack the official who made the announcement. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so they realize it is the wrong thing to do. So okay. now they actually took down the whole uh curb, gaming cup web the the uh, policy or that the draft or they took it down. Oh, so there was a U turn. It was a yep. U turn, right? Okay. So I think clearly you see that the government is actually trying to um uh, convince investor to come back again. Okay, mm. so they are not going to announce like. Stupid things like that <laughs> that happens in late yeah. last year because you will uh, destroy trust, the confidence in not just yes. the stock market because then that extends to the economy as as a yeah. whole. Because if you like, the government can always just do whatever they want. Uh, yeah, in a sense, then investors get a bit jittery. Not just in the stock market, but investors in general putting money to grow a business there or whatever it is. It's a little bit. Uh, tricky in a sense yep. yes yeah. in fact before that they were actually trying to convince a lot of investors international investors even business men to go back to China and they're mm. trying to do all this uh, very friendly policy to the foreigners and that that news when it came out was like oh no they're going back okay you know, it kind of destroy uh, everything and because of that of course uh, foreign investors are pulling out and then now they are all looking into Japan okay because mm. Japan is the next thing right? okay. even among Chinese investors are also pulling out their funds from uh, China A share and they are also buying into the Japan ETF mm. <laughs> and I think that I saw that the premium they pay is actually way above the net asset value of the ETF itself okay, okay. which is crazy okay right yeah so and of course there were some uh, in the gen itself I think late second half of gen there were some derivative uh, losses from some of the retail investors basically there was a, a sort of like a margin call okay because of these uh, huge uh, losses right so yeah, so there was actually a lot of uh, s- negative sentiment, negative bad news. I think everything bad about China. Yeah, and yeah. I think I think we've. I mean, a lot of people know about it because this has been going on for some time. Yep. Uh, yeah, bad news after bad news, and you just don't know when you want to get. You can get off this this uh, ride, basically. Yeah. Uh, and then, um, you know, it's it's it. But it's in times like this that you go like, is there an opportunity? Uh, yeah, yeah. To look at this because again, there's value. There's it's, it's really really cheap. I mean, if you take into account, you know, your your personal preferences and your risk profile and all of that, but it is very cheap. And like you always say, Victor, it's like you know when things just look like look terrible. Yep, is the best time to have yes, have a look at things. Yeah. And that's uh, what you feel about China. Yeah. yeah. So so I think first thing is we have to be very clear because now I think China has been down for I think three years, mm-hmm. right? From the peak to the trough and all this, right? But 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 if you look, because a lot of times when be, when people look in China. They try. They compare it with the U.S. Mm-hmm. And when they look at the U.S., uh, the U.S. recovery for the past, I think, ten years uh, was superb. Mm-hmm. Right? You got your uh, 2018 tech crash. Like, uh, take one year to recover back to the peak. Right? Your COVID nineteen take six months to recover. Your two zero two two crash take two years, and we are back. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, all so, time highs. Yeah. yeah. So people's expectation of crash is right. It's only like maybe one to two years. Mm. Right? It's very short. But but if you were to go and track back the history of or decades in the uh, US in the past, right? They are crash, right? To return to a peak, right? Can take from four to seven years, yeah. right? But it's just that in the recent 10, 10 years, it's very fast. Everything has been just compressed. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. correct. So, yeah, 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 so that actually makes feels like investing during the bear market is very easy to make money. Mm-hmm. And then I think we saw that in 2020 when people yep. rush in and then all of a sudden there are a lot of investors sign up brokerage account and you know, hit stock hit all time high that was in 2021. Right? So wow, buy during the bear, right? And then sell during yeah. the bull. All right, so it was very short, everything was just fast, right? But when you go make reference to China, China seems like I went in in 2021 until this year, today 2024 is still down. Mm-hmm. Right? So it's like, this is like a long bear. Mm. Yeah, so to a lot of people, they will just look at China as like shit. Mm-hmm. Right? It's, it's trash. That's why I say trash can, right? Mm-hmm. So they no longer want to look at China, and a lot of investors are pulling it out. They look at US, wow, how time high. Mm-hmm. Right? So um, then that's where I think there's a comparison there. Uh, and of course, uh, yeah, so some, some bear markets are different from. Yeah. yeah I think those uh, who have investing for many decades, those really old timers, they can remember that crashes like you said, are not so 
they don't rebound so fast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, those who are watching this, I think you can go look back and remember things. Mm. Didn't, things didn't move so fast. Oh, yes, o- correct. O- I, mean, I, I can yeah. remember some of it. It wasn't that fast. Yeah, Oi Ona I think took six full years to fully recover back to where six it was. Six years. Six, six years. Yeah. yeah, two years of sell down, and then four years of boom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and of course, dot com. Uh, for US, uh, it took I think three years of down trend until 2003 from 2000 and then it took another three years mm. to four years yeah. to see the peak yeah. yeah so so it takes time but now everything is like attention span is so short if you know we're looking at shorts you're looking at instagram and tiktok and stuff like that no one has time for this yes. yeah <laughs> yes so it extends to the stock market in the u.s somehow but actually the, what's happening in china is actually typical of what happened in the past yep. yeah. but anyway re- regardless of that um China is at this level, like you said, two standard deviations down from down. its uh, yes. from yes. its mean. Uh, this is what for PB or P- PE? What's PB. This? I think PB. Uh, even if you look at uh, PE, also it's uh, very close to uh, it's in between uh, one to two standard okay. deviation down. Okay. Right. So both metric basically pointing to you that you know it, it's depressed. Okay. In fact, if you look at PE alone during the oil nine, the PE for Hang Seng was I think nine yeah. times Ooh. plus. Yeah. Now if you look at PE. For Hang Seng Index, I think at this time this recording is actually below nine. Mm. It's even cheaper than O eight O nine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I think the question now is yes, we all know it's 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 bad news, but and it's cheap. Is there are there any things you know any indications that things could actually turn around uh, this year in twenty twenty four? You know, I mean, year of the dragon and everything, um, but are there any catalysts that could actually change things around? Are there any like green shoots? Uh, the awakened dragon. <laughs> <laughs> awakened okay, dragon. so the, I'm thinking that this uh, there there have been a lot of news that you know China, uh, the government is trying to do whatever it takes to boost back the confidence, right? They yeah. have you know, uh, the the wealth fund, the sovereign wealth fund itself, they actually vows to stay, um, you know, provide. I mean, play their role in uh, stabilizing the market, yeah. but you don't know the details how they're going to do that. Okay, right, and of course, the China is also uh, weighing on the stimulus stimulus uh, option. Of uh, op- basically mobilizing up to two trillion uh, yen, okay, to pump liquidity in the market, and that of course will boost the sentiment. But those all these news has been out for a while, right? It's just that whether they were going to be more aggressive this year, like the stimulus. I think the market is expecting them to actually uh, uh, follow what US did when twenty twenty hit, right? There was a massive stimulus, right? But, but the difference is that Chinese, I mean, they have a lot of savings, right? It's just mm-hmm. that. They now things are getting bad, so they 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 don't want to utilize that saving. It's just how do you convince the Chinese to really spend, and the for the economy, right? So that is the tricky part. And by giving them stimulus, I don't know whether that is going to help. Yeah. So the China government basically is doing, they are trying to do all the things to mm. convince back the the investors, and of course the locally, of course they also need to solve, a problem like your their demographic issue because China population also is coming down. There is uh, more. Uh, death than the birth uh, rate n- uh, number of births right now in mm-hmm. China. So mm-hmm. this is a long term and structural issue for China, right? So uh, I don't know whether twenty twenty four is going to be a big change in terms of policy change, especially the t- stimulus part, right? But it's something that we need to watch out for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but regardless, I mean, if you are investors looking at China market, you have to put the macro situation aside. Okay. Because usually macro situation is the one that will drive all the bad news and the prices will have collapsed. Mm. And that's the time where you should be focusing on uh, looking at the companies, quality companies that you think that can withstand this crisis. Okay. That can come out. So yeah. what you're saying is not just say, hey, China is bad, avoid China. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of, there, there are a lot of not so good companies in China. Yep. Yeah. But let's, it's not saying that if you want to invest in China, you got to buy the whole basket or the whole ETF. You can actually kind of like look at the really good companies that are listed in China or Hong Kong. Yes, yeah. right. That are actually have been pulled down along with this whole mess. And then, but they're actually great companies. Yeah. Mm. And, but they're just cheap right now. Correct. Yeah. So, I mean, any examples that you want to point out? Yeah, so I think for like one play where people can look at China is uh, looking at those companies that are listed in Hong Kong, mm. but their operations are outside of Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Okay, right. So yeah. you have uh, I think quite uh, plenty of uh, companies that are in structure in that way. So I think we have like you know CKI. Yep. Right? Okay. So their business is like Hong mm, Kong infrastructure. Hong Kong right? infrastructure. Yeah. Okay. Like, okay. their business are in actually in the. Europe, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean they do have Hong Kong and China, but it's a small part of yeah. the business. But these are all what you call dividend companies. Okay. Companies. Right. I okay. mean, yeah. if you know that there's a chance that chi- uh, Hong Kong or China will recover, yeah. then you just buy and get paid 
to, to wait, wait to wait recovery. Period. Yeah, yeah. Right. Because yeah. some people they don't want to buy into companies that don't pay dividend because you can be down for a long time. You don't know when. Yeah. But mm. while, while waiting, I've been paid. I'm okay. Mm. Or right. even like within the property sector itself, uh, you can actually pick up companies that have uh, property exposure in China, but they are not involved in all those property development. Mm. Right about their investment is actually more like a. Like a uh, you know collecting rental and you know, all that commercial side. Okay, they are not really directly affected by residential, uh, but the sentiments are bad. You know, generally, so that those are the companies that I think will continue to do well. Mm-hmm. Right. So those one play that you can look at. Of course, the other play is of course you can just simply buy. Look at those companies that have uh, purely derived their revenue mostly from China itself. Okay. So for example, your Tencent. Right. Okay. So they derive about their revenue from China. So even there's a political war. Or tension between U.S. and China, mm-hmm. a lot of manufacturer might get hit. Okay, right? but if you are uh, derive hundred percent of revenue from China, okay, you may not get hit as much. Okay, right. So, uh, so like for example, Tencent. I mean, they have a uh, multiple catalyst in the company itself, right? So, it's just that now because of the bad news and then the gaming rules that they're gonna change the curb the spending for, uh, game per mm-hmm. adult. I think that also directly. In Impact them, okay, and the whole sector basically, the whole China, the whole stock actually crash. Mm. Right, the valuation w- is actually being derated because of the slower growth. Right, even though China hit their GDP growth of five point two percent, they actually forecasted to hit around five percent, but they managed to uh, beat you know, it. Beat it at five point two percent. Okay, yeah, but but some people who don't like China will say, yeah, I cannot try the number. <laughs> 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 so I think, but anyway, so officially they hit it, right? Okay. It's just that twenty twenty four, a lot of people are expecting that China to grow slower. But they're still growing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's such a huge economy that growing at four percent. Uh, they expected to grow at four percent to to less than five percent. I think that's what a lot of people are projecting. I'm not. I'm not an economist, right? So okay. I don't know about that. Okay. So, but from what I know is that if you find those companies that are going to be, you know, I mean, they are the 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 outlier in current situation. And when the cycle come back, yeah. when China managed to pull through their you know GDP growth or or whichever, right? Those companies will stand to benefit. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So that will leads to re-rating. Okay. Yeah. So the 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 main benefit is of course it's so cheap. So it's like the risk is, a l- I mean in terms yep. of price because it's so cheap, your yeah. risk is, is lowered, because I mean the more expensive it is, the more risky it gets. Yes, correct. Uh, but there's no guarantee that it could happen this year, yep. in 2024. We don't know. Yeah. We don't we know. We don't know. But uh, do you feel that there things are different nowadays? I like, is, is the government giving any sort of indication? I think it's not much about the government. It's okay. more like a sentiments where I feel that now we are almost at the peak of where the bottom is it? Or things are okay, okay. because uh, when I look, when you start to see even among Chinese are not investing in China market, mm. that's kind of tell you that it's more or less a bottom. Okay, <laughs> okay. And you see blood on the street, that kind of tell you that you know. Uh, so you just have a very bottom. contrarian approach, approach right, yes. right yeah. now. It's like it's so bad. So so bad that you don't mind taking and the yeah. And bet. some of my friends say they don't want to be in China. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So and uh, I can tell you that people look at the China stock. If you're a Chinese stock, you look at it as like, oh, this is trash, mm. right? How this the yeah. uh, lousy stock, mm. and you wouldn't want to pump in more money there, right? That mm. what that was lead to what happened in the 2023, mm. right? More people are pulling out and then let follows through in 2024. Yeah. So things are so bad. Mm. Okay, and that could be a sign that we might be. At the bottom, mm-hmm. right? and even the valuations are pointing towards the same uh, direction. Okay? okay, so that yeah, so that itself. Uh, when I look at some of the companies that I invested, for example, back to Tencent, right? They are hitting record revenue, record profit, but nobody is talking about it. Mm. Yeah, because people just say, "Oh sh- shit, this okay. gaming regulation gonna comes in again, uh-huh. and it'll be gone." And gaming is just a a, a fifth or, or, or one quarter of the revenue for okay. Tencent. It's not everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So and they have a multiple catalyst in it, and it's just that now the sentiments are so bad, the foreign funds are pulling out. It doesn't matter how good you are, mm. you be sell down together with the rest of yep. the stocks. Yeah. So, so if so this happened in the US, mm. where they record very good rev- revenue and profits, the share price will jump maybe. Okay. Yeah. 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 So I think I think it's I think I find China really interesting. I think a lot of people believe that China is I mean is 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 powerful in in the sense that its economy mm. is very powerful. There's it's it's big and it's a lot. Of, there's still some growth to go. Yep. And at the same time, they also feel like, hey, look, it's like the demographics are, are bad, you know, people are not yeah. spending, or the, the, there's deflation and stuff like that. Like opinions all over the place. And it's just, it's almost like 
maybe like when we talk about Tesla, some people just love Tesla. Some people just like, yeah, I'm not going to touch Tesla. Almost something like that. Yep. Yeah. I, I I don't know if that's a, that's how you feel about China, but I just find that there's so many different views about China, and it's a, a bit it's a bit hard to find a consensus on yeah what so, this so, is. So I think uh, for current situation in China, right, it's very interesting. It's no longer uh, buying good companies. It's more on like your psychology. Mm. It's a psychology game now, okay. right? Yep. I mean, you can have a great companies coming to you, sell, they are selling at the teens, they are the monopoly there, uh, they are a single digit PE, and it's such a great company, wonderful companies, and it's very clear that you know they will stay the same in the next five to 10 years. But people now just, they're not interested. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because ah. everything is just so yep. bad, you know, <laughs> I lost money. Okay. So it's a psychological game. Yeah. So this mm-hmm. is the part where I think, uh, if you are long-term investors, um, you need to overcome it because it's the most difficult part in the bear market. The mm. same thing, if I were to check with you in 2003 in the US market, and then you look at your US stock, they are like trash, mm-hmm. right? People were like, hey, US is not good. And then Asian companies like Singapore yep. were doing well, you know, mm. next until 2000, and there was a decade where the, the Singapore, a lot of companies were doing well, mm-hmm. Asian, right? So, um, it's you know in the so th- this like investing they always say that it's simple but not easy. Yeah. yeah. When they okay. say not easy means your psychology. Yeah. Okay. Your but mental. I want to say it's very hard to get to consensus mm-hmm. because if you get to consensus, the valuation will be like this already. I yeah. mean the consensus right now seems yeah. to be is trash. Yeah. <laughs> hopeless. Precisely hopeless. Yeah. comes with the valuation. Yeah. yeah. You don't yeah. get good news and good valuation. You get Correct. bad news and good valuation. Yes. Yeah, okay. Right. But I'm just saying that it's, it's, it's very diverse views as well. I, um, yeah. And yeah, I, I mean, I would say you argue that the consensus now is that China is is uninvestable. Yeah. That's what they say, it, right? Yeah. yeah. Correct. But I I, 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 don't, I don't agree that you okay. know why because uh, so I think there's some uh narrative out there is that the mm. because now all the foreign funds are pulling out yeah. and a lot of people says that okay the foreign funds won't be back. I I I don't I don't believe in that. Why? Okay. Because if you were to look back in, uh, I think around early two thousand three. Early early two thousand three. Okay. Before two two zero two two right, the foreign funds pull out because of the property crash, and also the regulation. They did pull out. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But the the moment the the government say that oh okay, uh we're not going to regulate. It's going to finish and the property crisis just silent out. On the twenty twenty three right, the China market just came back. The Hong mm-hmm. Kong market just came back. Mm-hmm. Right. Then. Then where the property crisis start to resurface, that's where it start to go down, and all this, and also the, the the regulation sort of like some stupid guy come and regulate again and get slapped by the government, right? Then it starts to go down again okay. until now, right? Okay. So so if you say that the foreign funds won't go back, then why is there an increase in 20, early twenty twenty three? These are all the foreign funds. But my take is at the end, right? The foreign funds don't care whether it's US or China. As yeah, long okay. as there's, there's money to make, okay. they will come back. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. I okay. mean, we have to be objective here. They did come back. Mm-hmm. right? Because, but at that point of time, a lot of people say it's not coming back. Yeah. But they did come back. Right? Hedge funds or funds, they just come, they just want to make the money. It does yeah. not matter if it's political or not political, you know? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So basically, I think what you should do, uh, mm. I mean, last or last two, session where we did with US market when it's boom market and then we share about what you should do during the boom okay. market right okay. now I think maybe what's more important or useful is that what should you do during the bear market especially uh, you know China is going through right now right so for now I think what you should do as an investor is ignore the noise right because okay. there are so many bad news about the the, the market right? so you want to pay attention on the companies that you invested mm. right make sure that they are still fundamentally solid all right? and their runway is still there I think those are the main things, yeah. right? And, and if you want to make your journey easy, buy on dividend companies. Mm. Yeah. Like get paid to wait. You get paid to wait. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's yeah. what I think uh, China, Hong Kong market is perfect f- now. Uh, mm. You just buy for dividend stock, like what Victor mentioned, right? Mm. And of course, it's not a time where you should change your strategy. Okay. Right? I mean, you might look at your investment right now uh, and China, I say, oh, this is uh, it's not a right strategy. I shouldn't even allocate China investment. You should just switch everything to US. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, most people will do that because they measure the performance. All these are past performance mm-hmm. it doesn't tell you about the future right so uh, and it's very easy for you to change strategy because it proves that it doesn't work because you're losing money yeah <laughs> and, and that's precisely how people buy high sell low yeah okay okay so i saw 2021 people who switch from value to growth investing and then next moment 2022 they disappear because okay. their growth stock all wrap out by 80 90 percent okay so we have a few friends i think yeah. in the industry that did that and that's that's the worst time to change strategy. Okay. okay. <laughs> so you shouldn't do that during the bear market, because that will come again. They say, oh, it's not making you're not making money, and then it's like you're 
telling yourself to change strategy. Okay. But it's not the right time to do it. All right. right. And of course, monitor your mental health. I think the bear market, it's especially with down for almost consecutive three years, like what you are going through China, it's very difficult to to break that psychological, mm. uh, you know, the barrier that is holding you back. Mm. Right. So make sure that you you are still good. You know. Okay. You, have, you, have, yeah, you are feeling yeah, depressed. I mean, you should the, the stock market shouldn't. When the stock market is depressed, you shouldn't be depressed. Be depressed. Right. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't be depressed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, now start deploy your ch- war chest. Okay, that's okay. what you should be doing during the bear market. Mm. Yeah. So I think it's not about whether it's China, or like you said, it's not China, or Japan, or yeah. any other country. If you see an opportunity, and in, in this sense, it's an opportunity because it's so cheap, yeah. and there are still really good companies in China. Yeah, yeah. mega companies. Yes, and you can buy into companies that is yeah. not business. It's not in China, so yeah, yeah. Because it's listed in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, for example. Yeah. yeah. And the dividend plays is, is a great yeah. example of getting paid to wait as well. Yes. So there are many ways to do this to, to skin the cat basically um, but it's basically there's an opportunity here and you are just looking at it from that lens not whether it's because it's, I'm pro-China or anti-China or anything yeah, like yeah, that so yeah. it's just it's an it. opportunity I want yeah. to have a, a, a piece of that if you're okay with it if yeah. you're okay with the risk there yeah okay so speaking of this of course you also have to manage the risk from a portfolio level right so I'm not saying that oh now bear market uh, you should be 100% in China yeah, no yeah yeah so you should allocate a percentage that you are comfortable with and just say if you're comfortable with only 10% uh, mm. do 10% yeah. okay yeah if you are comfortable with 50% then you do yeah. 50% because anything can happen you yeah. never know right okay. so you always split the market location yeah no one can give you that answer how many how much percentage you should allocate it's only you are able to answer that question and for some the people percentage you can sleep well and some yeah. people it's zero and yeah. that's fine uh, yeah, that's, that's fine, fine. That's, that's fine as well right yeah so I mean it's just that there's an opportunity in this particular market just happens to be China. Yep. It's yeah. cheap and there are great companies there as well. Yep. And you just like, yeah. I'm just making a play based on, on those, that data. Yeah. Yep. Those are the numbers. Yeah. Yep. And of course, some people who don't want to cherry pick on companies, you can just buy the index. Okay. That's one way you can do it. Uh, I think the greatest index in Hong Kong, I, I feel that it's always Tracker Fund. Mm-hmm. They have the best uh, fees, right? 0.08%. Okay. The lowest one that give you exposure to a lot of, uh, you know, 80 over Chinese uh, or Hong Kong companies mm. they are listed they are under part of the SGI uh, constituents right it used to be 30 but I think they have uh, I think broadened it so okay. it's a lot more diversified now okay okay yeah. so yep. I think um, yeah I think that's what we think about China I think it's been it's been uh, three years of you know, bad news and all that yeah uh, but yeah, we thought we'd just cover it because Chinese New Year at this point in time yeah. uh, and some of you were asking about it as well and I think it's time that we did it yep um, is there anything you want to share about China at this mm, point, um, before we wrap up. Yeah, I know it's, it's, you know, when I talk about deploying watches, some of you say, it was me, I deploy a uh, handshaking, you know, <laughs> I deploy until uh, 2022, I bought a lot, <laughs> and now I came back down again, you shake, shaking your head. <laughs> stay calm, and of course, uh, you have to stay, you have to go through this crisis, because in the stock market cycle, uptime is always easier to go through than downtime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, downtime is the most difficult part, and that's why people are often very scared to buy during downtime. Okay. Because things just look so wrong. Yeah. Yeah. That's yes, right. Okay. Yep. So again, no recommendation to buy or sell anything. It's really up to you. Please do your due diligence and your yeah. research. Uh, no recommendation whatsoever. Okay. But uh, so that's what you. That's Kung your take. Si fa cha, yeah. Kung yeah. Si yeah. Fa Year of Dragon. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I can share one more tip though. During uh, Chinese New Year, yeah. you need to buy Toto. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you Hatch know it, uh, for it could be your best investment <laughs> <laughs> ever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, double digit millions. If you're the only one that wins it, uh, there was one time there was one guy that won the whole thing. I think it was twelve million yeah. all by themselves. Crazy! I can't imagine anything like that happening. But yeah, I mean, if you never win, you are doing charity. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. charity. I mean, yeah. Singapore, Singapore pool. in Singapore pools. If you part of it goes to charity as well. <laughs> I think that's a great model. Uh, so yeah, don't forget to buy your lottery ticket. All right, so for, <laughs> for the new year. Okay, so with that, my name is Adam. That is Ruzman. That is Victor. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for joining us. Any questions about this, put them in the comment section. If you like this round table, please hit the like button. Tell us we're doing a good job. And of course, subscribe to our channel. And we'll see you again.